Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an early look at January, we're going to be taking again an early look at January, looking at that colder pattern that might take place and is already in place and that might lead to some more snow uh, down the road into portions of early and middle January, late January still we don't really know what's going to happen but I'm fairly certain that at least early and mid January will be slightly or even moderately below normal in terms of your temperatures, we're going to be going over a lot of a different parameters. Parameters. We're going to look at some of those, uh, some of the polar vortex indices and also a potential stratospheric warming event that might shift in some more cold air. We're also going to be looking at some of the teleconnections and a new oscillation, the MJO, uh, which I'll be talking about uh, near the end of the video. And then we'll also talk about how much snow you might see within that period. Now, also, if you would like a li uh, little discussion or if you have any questions for me, uh, definitely leave a comment down below and I try to answer everybody's comment within about an hour or two of you posting it uh, and I try to get to you as soon as I see the comment and as soon as I get that notification on my phone. So here's the current National Weather Service page and we're looking at winter weather advisories for portions of Alaska as well as for the western United States and then you see that larger area of winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories for the northeast there. We're dealing with some blizzard warnings and northwestern most Alaska as well as some high wind watches in effect for portions of northern Montana and some high wind warnings for portions of southeastern Wyoming and then we have some coastal flood watches I believe those are up for portions of coastal New Jersey Delaware and into southern Maryland now Here's what the uh, 10 millibar GFS is showing, and if for, if for those of you who aren't aware of this, I've been talking about this a lot, especially for those of you who were watching my videos about a month ago, I was talking about this a lot, the 10 millibar GFS, and this shows you where the polar vortex is and what's happening about 90 to 105,000 feet up in the atmosphere, and that really has a big play on how our, uh, how our upper air actually sets up, how our surface patterns actually set up, and this can actually be very, very important. Important. So this is again 90 to 105,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So of course you would assume this isn't going to take place right away on the surface. It's going to take about two weeks for that to go down to the surface. So for example, this is what the 10 the, the 10 millibar looks like right now. This would be uh, December 16th. So you can assume something like this is going to happen between about the 26th and the 30th. So you have to add about 10 to 14 days to this, and that's when you can assume that this is what the uh, what the surface uh, map will look like for that day uh, and generally where that cold air will be for uh, those uh, for those areas on those days now something that you want to pay attention to two different areas that I'm going to highlight for you guys notice over portions of China the Koreas uh, and into portions of Mongolia and Russia notice that you're going to get some warmer air and some stratospheric warming into this area and then also notice here this is your polar vortex right here this big blob of blue over uh, Greenland and the Arctic Circle that's your polar vortex. So those are the two areas that you want to uh, keep. You, you want to kind of track as we go through this, and that's something that definitely keep your eye on those two things as I play this through. So this would be what the current 10 millibar heights look like, and then let's play this through. Here would be by Friday, this the 18th. Here would be by the 20th. Here's by the 22nd. Here's by Christmas Eve, and then here's by Christmas. So let's stop here. Let's dissect what's happening. We see this high pressure or this area of ridging kind of moved a little bit further to the west. So now that main area of ridging is over portions of uh, eastern China and into eastern Russia in that region. And we're also dealing with a lot more of that warmer air pushing into portions of eastern Europe and east into eastern Asia there where you're that's actually going to lead to more of that colder air that was going to go into Europe it's now being forced into portions of North America so here's what your general jet stream flow looks like you have that trough in the east and that's because uh, the polar vortex if it does spill it can be concentrated over either North America or Europe and Asia so the, it would either kind of spill like this into portions of Europe and Asia and we would end up being the area that's under some of that warmer air uh, or 
maybe our cold air wouldn't be as cold. But when you have a stratospheric warming event, that ends up pushing uh, some of that colder air to one side of the planet, one side of uh, of North America or Asia. So uh, in this case, Asia is the one that has the stratospheric warming event. So now this cold air cannot go into Asia. It wants to exit the Arctic Circle uh, because it's not a very strong polar vortex. It's going to get picked up by a couple systems that will lead it to spill down. So now it's only exit option is to go down into North America. So what is end up what it's uh, what's going to end up do, uh, happening is that you're going to see a concentrated ball of energy uh, this area right here dip further to the south and further to the south and then eventually it'll be right over our area. So as we continue this forward here's by the 26th here's by the 28th and you can see that very warm air up in Russia, Mongolia, uh, China uh, and getting through portions actually moving into Europe by this point. Uh, that's where you're looking at that stratospheric warming event and then you see that cold air dipping down as you get onto the other side of that warming event that's where you're dealing with that polar vortex that's shifting some of that colder air further to the south now playing this through again here would be by the 29th here's by uh here's by new year's eve and then here would be by january 1st uh and this is as far as the model goes out if we add uh that 14 days to this which is generally how long it would take to translate to the surface this would probably actually happen by about january 15th this is what your map should look like by january 15th on the surface and this would be very good if you like cold and snow uh because we do have that warming event out in portions of asia and then we have that big trough into the central and eastern United States so definitely you would be in a favorable pattern for snow and cold and something that's really uh, catching my eye is that we are dealing with potentially some sort of a split in the polar vortex because we do have two distinct areas or semi distinct areas of low pressure and if those two split apart that's where you can get even more cold air into the eastern United States so definitely pay attention to see if this uh, area of polar vortex really does split up or not and that's going to also be a big factor into our pattern. Now here's the teleconnections because these can also be very important. Uh, this is the NAO, an area south of Greenland in the North Atlantic. This is your North Atlantic Oscillation and we're looking at uh, right now this is right around a negative 1.5 uh, and that will actually start to warm a little bit but then I do think it'll go back uh, further down uh, probably back to right around negative 1. So overall you do want some sort of a weak to moderate uh, NAO. Sometimes if you have too strong of an NAO actually can lead to not uh, to some of those snowstorms actually missing a lot of areas. So you usually want more of a weak to moderate uh, NAO to get some of those bigger snowstorms. And that's what we have. At least there is no sign of this going anywhere near positive. And uh, definitely, I don't think that'll be the case at least through the next about uh, 15 to 30 days. Now, here's the AO. And this is going to be one of the bigger things is that we see uh, that big warming uh, trend as we get right near the 19th and the 21st is still very negative but then it goes back further negative to negative 3 or negative 4 and what that can do is uh, that's an area over the Arctic and that is uh, meaning that we're going to see some of that colder air spill down and that leads to uh, that polar vortex weakening and then again more of that cold air spilling further to the south. Now Here's a couple of the oscillations out in the Pacific. Here's the PNA, and you usually want this to be actually quite positive, like we had four or five degrees positive, and that's actually very, very favorable for cold and snow in the east. Right now, it's near neutral, which isn't uh, really that bad. You can definitely still have a lot of cold and snow if you do have uh, that neutral, which is kind of right now is a testament to that. Uh, right now, the east coast is having a snowstorm, uh, or, as, or in a couple hours, they will at least uh, for many areas be under snow, and we're only in a neutral PNA so you don't need a uh, you don't need a strongly positive PNA it just helps if you do have that and it looks like it might go up to near uh, two or three degrees positive as we get to right around Christmas time now here's the EPO and you usually want this to say to stay in the uh, in the above normal category or in that positive phase uh, and it does look like it's gonna stay there it did dip down a while ago but now it's starting to head up straight up to right around three or four degrees uh, positive maybe 
maybe it dips down again, but then it should uh, go back up a little bit further to that two or three degrees positive. Now, here's all the areas that those cover the NAO up in the northern Atlantic, the AO over the Arctic Circle, the PNA over the uh, over Western North America, and then we see the EPO over portions of the central and you could say the eastern Pacific uh, as well. Now, here's another thing that I really haven't covered too much on my channel. I think this might actually be the first time that I'm using it. This is the MJO, the Madden Julian Oscillation, and this is an area over uh, the Indian Ocean, just to give you a little example. It's this area, the stretch from about South America to Africa, this area right here, that the Madden Julian Oscillation covers, and it basically uh, sees where are those areas of higher pressure, where are those areas of lower pressure, uh, and that really graphs it out, and usually when you're in a phase 1, 8, uh, 7, and sometimes if you're in a phase 2, you will be most likely in some of that colder air. If you're in that 6, 3, 4, or 5, that's usually when you're in warmer air for a lot of the United States. So uh, going back to that graph, here's the, the Madden uh, Julian Oscillation, and that purple line is where we were. This is uh, going through time. That was through November. That red line is through December, and then that green line is what we're seeing uh, forecasted. And we are expecting this, and a lot of these models are forecasting this to go uh, kind of near neutral and you wouldn't have too much effects from the Madden Julian oscillation if it's in this kind of circle area so that's kind of your neutral area but it does go back up uh, potentially to six and then maybe getting into that seven phase now the MJL really doesn't have too much of an effect if it's not correlated with other things so you can be in a phase eight and still have warm temperatures but most of the time you will be in some of those colder temperatures now just to kind of uh, go over over what it means here is the uh, here's the uh, the phases and what they mean now phases one through eight usually leads to colder temperatures that's indicated in that blue that's really your coldest uh, th your coldest uh, phases now two and seven usually are fairly cold but they are less cold than one and eight but you can still get quite a bit of cold if you do live uh, if, if you do have a two and seven uh, phase of the MJO and then the six five four three all of those are really those warmer phases that's where much of the United States goes into a pretty much a blowtorch pattern and what we're seeing I switched it over to the CFS model and what the CFS model is actually doing is bringing this uh, potentially closer to a two a one or maybe even an eight in some cases so that would definitely be your uh, three pretty much coldest phases and that's definitely something uh, encouraging if you do like cold and snow now here's what that means again and you see for phase one uh, and phase two those are very cold you can see all that blue indicating below normal but then as you get into phase three four five and six those are where you're getting a little bit a little bit warmer and then back into phase seven and eight some parts of the United States do get back into a bit of a colder pattern now looking at a couple of other things here's the climate prediction center's forecast and i really don't understand where they're getting these above normal temperatures from and uh if you remember the one month outlook for december they had a blowtorch over much of the united states and it definitely is not a blowtorch over much of the United States. And in fact, I think my forecast is going much better than what they forecast because they were forecasting the only areas that were going to be below normal was the northwest or the northwestern corner of the U.S. And that really isn't what's happening. So uh, right now, even though you might be seeing the CPC going a lot warmer, I really don't know where they're finding that from and what they're basing that off of. Uh, and right now, I'm still thinking it's going to be colder. And definitely, I think it'll be chillier over the next few days at least now here's the 8 to 14 day uh, the uh, 8 to 14 day outlook and it is getting a little bit colder you see that little area of neutral or even below normal for the eastern united states but also i really don't see where this extreme above normal is coming from uh so i didn't read their discussion but i really don't understand where uh their uh their very warm temperatures are coming from uh and i think still it's going to be colder than normal from everything else that i'm seeing uh th that would really point to a colder pattern now here's what the European 10-day snowfall is looking like the European ensemble this is a collection of about 50 models or so and they average them out uh, we see that little system over the Northeast and generally uh, a lot of those areas could be getting definitely a decent amount of snowfall but for the rest of the US maybe just a little coating or so and I usually like to use this more for the probability of snowfall or seeing at least an inch of snowfall so if you're in those grays that's usually around 30% uh, or generally what I like to think of it as two to six 
six inches in those blues, that's where I, I think it's closer to 40 or 50 or even 60 percent that you see snow within that time period. And then in those purples, those pinks, and the lighter pinks and blues, and the, and the lighter blues, that's where I think you have a near 100 percent chance of seeing snowfall within that time period. Uh, and definitely a lot of those areas, again, over the northeast, that's from that system today. Uh, so that really doesn't count too much. Now, here's uh, going through uh, 30 days, and this goes through th the 13th of January, and we still see a footprint from that uh, northeast storm, but definitely there must have been some sort of other storm that the models are showing, because those amounts did go up, and you see a good area that's getting 2 plus inches, which would be closer to a, four to a 40 or 50 percent chance of seeing some uh, decent snowfall. Now, here would be the 28th of January. This is as far as it goes, 45 days out, and just averaging it out, you can see that 6 inch plus line keeps on going further to the south and further to the south, and definitely you can see how a lot of the United States, especially as you cut the uh, United States in half, uh, probably the northern half of the United States has a decent chance and actually a very likely chance that they'll see uh, some snowfall over this time period. So if you do like more of these uh, educational type videos or more of these scientific uh, videos then definitely let me know down below where I go a little bit more in depth it is a little bit longer than my typical videos but that's just because there's a lot more to cover hopefully you guys did enjoy this type of video I think I'm going to be putting out a couple more like this over the next few days just because the pattern should be quiet so longer range things will probably overtake uh, overtake the uh, the forecast and that's really what I'm going to start focusing on after the storm uh, because they're really won't be too many storms after it, uh, at least not in the short term. So again, if you would like uh, me, me to answer any of your questions, definitely la leave, a com uh, leave a comment down below and I'll definitely uh, try and answer it within about an hour or two of you posting it. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.